Hey, you want to know what these are like now that they're 20 years old? You want to know what goes wrong with them? Do you want to know if you should buy one or not? Also, do you want to know why this particular one is very, very special? How about we answer all of those questions and so much more? Okay, first up to set the scene here, the first generation T30 or the 2001 to about 2007 X-Trail was basically Nissan's answer to the Honda CRV and Toyota RAV4. And you could argue that this trio maybe inspired the, the popularity that this category is now seeing. Now there are fundamentally two iterations of the T30, the pre-update and the post-update, with the post-update getting the usual you know, improvements to tech and features, and a very, very subtle facelift. Now pre-update there were three different trim specs, post-update there were five trim specs, plus four special editions. But this one is a GT, and that wasn't listed on the graphic, but we'll explain why this is special really soon. Now, as far as engines go here in Australia, we just received the 2.5 litre naturally aspirated four mated to either a five speed manual or a four speed auto. Good news, but it is a torque converter auto, not a CVT like some of the newer ones. Mm. But those scallywags at Nissan like to keep secrets, don't they? Because under here is not that naturally aspirated 2.5 litre. This is a two litre turbo. You can tell from the very funky 90s looking font there. This is an SR20 VET. That is the same engine, sort of, kind of, as you'll find in like a Nissan 200SX or a Silvia or the Pulsar GTIR. Now this means that this old thing has a better power to weight ratio than the current Volkswagen Golf R wagon. And as we all know, Japanese manufacturers tend to underclaim their power figures, so driving this is going to be interesting. Actually, speaking of driving, but more specifically driving off-road, look, like most SUVs in this category, these are ostensibly front-wheel drive until the rear wheels lose any grip, then it sends power to all four wheels. But unlike a whole bunch of other cars in this category, you can lock the all-wheel drive system and it equally sends power to all four wheels, giving them some pretty decent off-roading chops. In fact, Search on YouTube T30 X Trail Off Road, and these things fitted with some like all terrain tyres are capable of some pretty amazing stuff. Now, look, pricing wise, 1500 bucks here in Australia will get you a very, very rough example. Good ones of the like the non turbos, you're looking around about the ten thousand dollar mark. A GT like this, you're going to be looking anywhere from sort of fifteen to twenty thousand bucks. Now, that does seem like a lot of cash for a 20 year old SUV, but it's it's this with an SR20 in it. Like, Come on. Although we, we do need to take you through what goes wrong with these. But if you are in the market for one and you're looking at getting some finance on it, guys, don't sign up to the wrong finance package. So to avoid that, hit the driver link down below because that way driver will find you the very best finance package from dozens and dozens of different lenders. The entire process is done easily online and you can get the cash in no time. Plus, if you do all of that via the link, we're gonna give you a free $150 fuel voucher. Now, back in the day, I used to own a T30 X Trail and one of the reasons I bought it was because of the looks. I love the way these look. I love kind of how boxy they are. For me, they look tougher than say a CRV or a RAV4. It looks less soccer mum SUV and more kind of mum that likes downhill mountain biking. Looks great. Actually, you know what? I feel like Nissan have really dropped the ball with the more recent X-Trails from like the third generation on, going all like gentrified and sweepy like every other SUV. They've lost all the character. Those ones look a bit meh. This. I love boxiness. Also, there are some really cool like design highlights, like the fact that the front quarter panels are plastic and also being an import, how cool is a quarter panel mounted mirror? We need these on all cars. So look, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like whoever designed the interior of the new Ineos Grenadier maybe just took this design and then like copied and pasted it and then just updated it slightly and then put it in that. Because like, look at this, you've got the same sort of boxy center console design here, instrument cluster in the middle, and then these kind of wings of multi-tiered layers kind of going out from the sides. Plus they both just feel kind of like tough and rugged. The only difference is this costs over $100,000 less. Now like the whole look, the design thing is obviously all subjective and there are plenty of people out there that just cannot get used to the gauge cluster being in the center of the car like this. But after living with one of these, I love that. Now because all of the interior materials in here are just tough plastic, you can treat these things like utter crap and just wipe it down. It looks pretty much like good as new again already. But the problem is because of its age, some of the plastics have become yeah, pretty brittle and squeaky and rattly and crackly. But in saying that, even after 20 years, like, 
all of the switch gear all still feels great to use. Same with the seats. These are still really comfy. I racked up thousands of kilometers in mine and never had a numb bum. Super comfortable. Even driving position, you feel like you're driving a little truck. Now, as far as wear and tear in this particular example, pretty good. Like door cards and all the interior plastics are in great shape. The seat, there is a bit of wear from the material here and the bolsters have seen better days, but they can be reupholstered. Now, practicality wise, this thing is awesome. Here we go. You've got kind of not, I wouldn't say they're cup holders, but they're like cup guides for these little spots here. You've got a storage cubby hole under the, where the gauge cluster normally would be. You've got pretty good size glove box, huge spot for your phone and whatever else you want just here. More spaces for your phone and whatever else you need there. Spot for coins and Nurofen just there. Under here, more cubby holes. You've got okay sized door bins are a bit on the thin side nowhere for sunglasses nothing under the seats uh, that's it for practicality really good something i forgot with practicality and this is one of the coolest features ever you've got cubby holes for water bottles but these are cooled how cool is that oh, there we go now on the subject of x things that love exploring trails i'm exactly four centimeters taller than x formula one driver and trail bike fan mark weber this is in my driving position fantastic back here guys good amount of knee room heaps of foot room and the seats are so comfy like i'm just sinking into it plus the glass house especially with the sunroof is huge so it just feels spacious and just a lovely accommodating place to be Wear and tear wise, but we've got a few kind of weird ripples in the backs of the seats here. The fabric has also seen kind of better days. Door cards again, because they're just super hard, scratchy plastics are in good shape. It's not too bad. The roof's okay. Yeah, like it's 20 years old. Of course, it's going to have a bit of wear and tear. Now, practicality in the back seat is interesting. You've got Uno map pocket here and Trez pockets here behind the passenger seat. You've got a pull down armrest, no cup holders, but I think you've got spots for maybe like CDs. It's weird, it's like, I'm not sure what you put in there. Anyway, also that flips down so you can get some access into the back. Now, as far as cup holders in the back go, this is ingenious. They're in the center console from the front. Flip it forward, two cup holders there, and more storage there. Awesome. So the other reason that I bought one of these was not just the looks, but also the practicality. First of all, no load lip. Also, because this is like hard plastic, it's so easy just to slide stuff in and out. Plus, if it's like a dirty mountain bike, you can just wipe it clean. It doesn't collect like carpet does. Now, with the rear seats in place, that's about as flat as these are going to get. But check this out. First up, remove the headrests. Flip this up. Flip this down. Completely flat. Now look, if you're a glass half empty kind of person, the amount of tech and features these come with is going to be very, very underwhelming. If you're a glass half full kind of person, this has everything you need and nothing you don't. So base models get air conditioning, power windows, central locking and all of this. But higher and newer models, they get climate control, cruise control and a leather interior and all of this. Now, obviously, there are more features than just these, but if you do need all the specific details, go to redriven.com and check out our cheat sheet. It's completely free and a must read if you're in the market. Now, look, obviously, with the age of these, you can completely forget about any you know, phone connectivity as standard, but as Leeton that owns this car has done, you can fit Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and whatever else you like, like a reversing camera, parking sensors with aftermarket gear, and it's super easy to do. Now, look, as far as safety features go, guys, it's a 20-year-old car. It's not amazing for safety equipment, but to take you through what safety equipment that you can expect, we're going to have someone else that's kind of a, a tough and rugged personality to take you through it. It's my good mate, Mr. Chris Hemsworth. Right, so the X-Trail comes with a couple of uh, airbags, anti-lock brakes, brake assist, electronic brake force distribution and uh, seat belts. The only catch for those uh, wanting a T30 as a family car is that electronic stability control isn't offered. But as Adam mentioned, all the specifics are on the cheat sheet. Okay, so sensible stuff first. Because this thing is so boxy, judging the parameters is so incredibly easy. It's actually something I loved about mine. Fitting into a super tight car parking space, absolute breeze. Also, because the glass house is massive, there are basically no blind spots. Now look, comfort wise, it might not be as cushy as you might expect. This is pretty early SUV suspension kind of technology. So to stop it pitching and rolling all over the place, the suspension has to be a little bit firmer. But otherwise, like even with the age of these things, you might be better off fitting some higher quality aftermarket suspension anyway. Also, we are talking, you know, a 20 year old X Trail here, so don't go expecting any like performance car levels of steering or handling or braking, but like, it, it's fine for what it is. Now, 
it is a little bit noisy in here like it's lots of hard plastics and it's kind of like you're sitting inside a big plastic cupboard really and being so boxy the wind noise can get up there when you start getting up to speed it's not unbearable but oh, also this has got like a slight sports exhaust so it's a little drony in here as well also quite a few owners have fitted extra sound deadening and apparently that makes a hell of a difference and then we come to well this thing's engine sr20 vet turbocharged doesn't make a difference yeah okay apparently it's got a better power to weight ratio than a golf r it doesn't feel anywhere near as fast as a volkswagen golf r so i'm not sure where that's coming from um but yeah like it is it's fun it's good the coins rattling around are a bit annoying but yeah you know what it's deceptively fast this almost feels like a really cheap version of a g-wagon it kind of has that same kind of utilitarian feel to it but then all of a sudden you put your foot down and yeah with a bit of a tune this thing could be a weapon look this engine you're not expecting this level of power from a car like this and i think that's that adds to the whole charm of the thing but look even with like the standard 2.5 liter engine it's a bit like the steering and the handling and the braking it, it does the job it's not terrible it's not amazing it just does the bloody job Okay, now what goes wrong with these? Let's start with the exterior. First up, unfortunately, it's rust. A really common place for these things to get rust is behind this plastic shrouding and at the base of the rear strut towers. Now you can check for that rust from like sort of underneath the car inside the strut tower itself, but if you wanna have a really good look, all this has to come out. Also check for rust around the rear wheel arches and just have a good thorough look everywhere. Now obviously with the age of this car, you might have some weird you know, electronic gremlins like door lock actuators and power mirrors kind of doing some weird stuff. But honestly, overall, these exterior wires are pretty bloody resilient. Oh, actually, like any used car as well, make sure you check out for any you know, accident damage or dodgy repair work or any signs of abuse, especially being an SUV if it's been taken off road and abused. Just watch our Ultimate Used Car Buyer's Guide and Ultimate 4x4 Buyer's Guide. The links are down there. But if you want to make a massive improvement to the exterior of the X-Trail or really any car, make sure you get yourself a set of WiperTech wiper blades. Simply hit the WiperTech link down there. They're easy to order online. They're going to be delivered to your door. They're super easy to fit and they're going to wipe beautifully. Plus, do all that via the link and you're going to get 15% off and free express shipping. Now, inside for problems, it's actually pretty good news here. Not a whole lot goes wrong. There are sort of the odd sporadic reports of some HVAC or air conditioning issues, things like blower motors dying out and just various parts kind of failing, but we wouldn't call them common issues. Even as far as like electronic gremlins go, very sporadic, not a whole lot commonly goes wrong. If you're in the market, just push every button and make sure everything works. Now, before we get into mechanically what goes wrong with these, a massive, massive thank you to Leighton for lending us his X-Trail. Mate, you're a legend. T30 Owners Groups, thank you guys so much for all of your advice and knowledge. And finally, thank you for watching this video and making it this far. But we want to make you a deal. If you support Redriven by hitting that subscribe button, we promise you we are going to work as hard as we possibly can to make the very best car content for you. Guys, the only way that Redriven can grow is with your support, and we thank you so much. Now, mechanically, what can go wrong with the T30X Trail? I'm sorry, guys. I can't tell you because I'm not a mechanic. The gym is. The Aussie delivered non-turbo head gaskets. Look, by design, they just fail. Um, sometimes they fail and the car overheats, sometimes the car overheats and then they fail. They just fail. And because the aluminium block in these is barely harder than a chunk of parmesan cheese, they do not like getting hot. Sometimes they warp, they get very soft, and you can put a new head gasket on it and it can still leak and you'll go back to where you started. If they've been that hot, you have to deck the block. And sometimes they've been so hot, the aluminum is just a write-off. And sometimes the whole engine's a write-off. So yeah, overheating head gaskets, very bad. Camshaft and crankshaft position sensors are a common fault in these, typically manifesting in a difficult to start situation, but relatively easy to fix. Often you'll hear the drive belt tensioner rattling away and it's worse at idle and especially when the AC's on. Look, before you rush in and put a belt tensioner on it, have a good look at the overrun pulley on the alternator. It's like a one-way bearing. Uh, often that seizes, which makes that rattling much worse. So do that, and quite often that fixes the rattle. They're at the age now where all the engine bay plastics are just fatigued with old age, and they become very brittle, especially the radiators, which is a big factor in these things overheating. As for the GT with the SR20, look, 
they do suffer from a bunch of the same problems, although the head gasket issues are not as common, but they do still have a few issues. Uh, they suffer from turbo complications, but that's more so age and servicing related, but it is an issue. They have coil pack and ignition issues, and sometimes the timing chain gets a bit rattly just before it fails, so keep a good ear out for that. We have seen a few of these over the years where the fuel gauge isn't working properly. Now, sometimes that's the problem with the sender in the tank, and other times it's a problem with the, uh, the dash, the instrument cluster, or sometimes both, and that can be a real headache. The auto transmissions in these, well, they are actually an auto, not a CVT. And if they've been serviced at least a couple of times in their life, you're really unlikely to have any dramas with it. Um, and the same goes for the manual too, pretty stout unit. And in the driveline though, we have seen a few cases uh, where the transfer case is, it just fails, the spline strip and it doesn't work. Now that can actually go unnoticed uh, until you need all wheel drive. And then you notice that the rear is not participating in the all wheel driving. So overall, look, these things, it's going to be age related problems that cause you the most headaches. Everything made of rubber, like the, you know, the, all the coolant hoses, the brake hydraulic lines and all the mounts and bushes, they are all going to need a good looking at. Okay, so should you buy one after all of that? Look, when it comes to the turbocharged GT models, yeah, of course you should buy one. Yes, a turbocharged Forester is arguably a more logical choice, but like, when is being logical ever equated to having fun? But as for the normal T30X Trail, should you buy one of those? Look, as much as I personally love them, no, you probably shouldn't buy one. Look, for the same money, a RAV4 or a CRV are just a safer bet. Look, the X-Trail has arguably better off-roading chops, and the liftback tailgate does make more sense versus the rear door of the other two. But at this sort of budget, reliability and maintenance costs should be the priority, and the Toyota and the Honda are generally superior to the Nissan. Look, an X-Trail is still gonna be arguably more reliable than anything European of the same kind of vibe, and look, if you do find a super low kilometer mint condition one with a thorough service history and it totally checks out with like a pre-purchase inspection and all of that sort of stuff, maybe buy it, but you've been warned. So the big question is, do you buy one or do you go a CRV or a RAV4? What else would you buy? Let us know in the comments below. See you next time. Okay, so let's set the scene here first up. <laughs> look, there are some complaints about some HVAC issues like the blower mount. Head gaskets. Head gaskets. <laughs> Even though I personally love them, no. You sh probably sh 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 sh